Well hello and Happy New Year. Thank you for joining me today. If it's your first time then a big hello. I am Lisa, I'm a vintage inspired dressmaker and dressmaking teacher. Now it feels like it's an absolute age since I've been with you. Christmas kind of puts quite a block of time where we're not doing our usual things are we? We're doing lots of other lovely things if we're lucky enough. So I've got all sorts to share with you. Um, it's a mix of knitting and the sewing today. It's a, a general sort of catch up of what I've done, what I'm starting on and, and where I'm hoping to be going. I'm sure you'll all be thinking it's the start of the new year. Soon the season will be moving into spring, let's hope so. so. In my last video, I talked to you about the knit that I am now wearing amongst many other knitting plans. And I finished it on the 30th of December. It's the Night Before Ski Jumper by Poison Girls, of which I've knitted before in the pale blue with like the snowflake pattern across the yoke. But I really wanted to work on Fair Isle, which, you know, I did discuss with you and I feel I've nailed Fair Isle. I decided I could do it in the yoke here, but I, you see a little sneak here, I've done it on the back also. Um, I forgot to bring the pink shrimps over. I will just get those. You might think oh, I'm talking about pink shrimps, but I was just remembering the shoulder pans I knitted, so I shall be back in two seconds. Basically, as I was talking to you, my brain was going through all the things I wanted to say to you, and then I thought, ah, oh, pink shrimps. So, I knitted this jumper with uh, a yoke. I had a magenta yarn in here as well, because I was using what was in my stash. In the end I decided to take the pattern down to just the main colour of the pink, a cream and a black, which has worked really well for me. I absolutely love it. Now my birthday was on the 29th of December, I turned 55, which is a nice even number. I do like balanced numbers. Um, I don't, you know, it's odd numbers I'm not so fond of, but when they're both the same number, it sounds so silly, but that's, in my head it feels right. So yeah, it was my birthday and I wanted to wear this. We were going on a lovely steam train um, adventure and then off for lunch and feeling like I wanted to be all Agatha Christie um, and I wanted to wear my new jumper when we went out. But I only had like that much, you know, it was really the cuff to finish and I knew I was staying up till one in the morning. I thought this is getting ridiculous. I'm going to spoil my birthday. I'll be too tired, so. I finished it the next day and I wore it on the 30th instead. So I was thrilled and it's so soft, this drops yarn. I think this is um, their merino yarn from memory. Um, and it's just delightful to wear next to the skin. It's really stretchy and soft and warm and lovely, but not too warm. So I did that, oh God, I love the pink shrimps. I'm waffling on about the pink shrimps and now I can't find where. I have put said pink shrimps. <laughs> Whatever you want about. Basically, it's shoulder pads. So they're knitted like tiny little um, croissants. And then you pad them. So I padded them with, I mean, there were so many bits of wool from the Fair Isle strand. So I stuffed them with that. And I put them in the shoulders, which this is a 50 style jumper. So really shouldn't have shoulder pads. But I just felt I wanted to emphasize these poofs here. So for the first wearing, I wore it with the shoulder pads and as the day went on, you know, got home, I thought, I really, really don't like them. They're wrong. So I cut them out and they're there waiting to go in something else, but obviously a 1940s knit where it needs that raising up. But yeah, shrimps have obviously swum off somewhere, so I can't show them to you, but you get the general idea. Now, while we're still talking about my birthday, after we'd uh, ridden the steam train, we'd gone to the pub for lunch, walked up the high street. It's a lovely, lovely seaside town, one I hope to live in one day, but who knows if I ever will. But it's lovely to have dreams, even if they don't happen, dreams sustain us. Um, there's an RSPCA charity shop there, and I'm always lucky when I go in there. And obviously I feel disappointed. I say I'm always lucky. Sometimes I'm not and then I feel disappointed. I hoped it being my birthday it would bring the auspicious um, charity shop helpers, the vintage finders with me. And it did. I found some 1950s bells to put on a Christmas tree, which I love with um, silver leaves. They're red bells. A lovely piece of china, which is in the box. So when I do bow around the box, I'll show it to you. And went in the back room and I saw obviously this end and I thought oh, 
my goodness, because they, they just don't have, you know, what I, the kind of books I'm after usually. And this was then, I pulled it out and I thought, I haven't got this one. The, I mean, the cover is just beautiful, isn't it? It's Practical Knitting Illustrated, the key to hundreds of garments you can make yourself. And it was part of um, a series by Odoms, and I can't remember the names of the two ladies. I'll put that below, and I will list the books that are in the series so you can try and collect them if you wish. But this is the first one from 1940, and I've got 1941 and 1942 in the series, but not the others as yet. So I found the first one and this is absolutely delightful. And I looked at it all the way home. So I will give you an overhead, overhead, overhead view of inside the book rather than me just flicking like that for you. So. absolutely thrilled with that the next day we went to a museum I had an outing with a friend and she gave me lots of marvelous birthday presents you know old buttons from a tin and finished patterns and all sorts of bits and bobs and this little knitting booklet was in there and there's some truly lovely things in here bedtime gifts good around Christmas so it's all your ideas that are good around Christmas I just want to find even though I don't drink tea you never often I um, pinpoint the pages before I come on here so I can show them to you really quickly but I didn't today so like I say whilst I don't drink tea I still really love a decent teapot cozy and that is just beautiful so I'm thinking because I have got teapots I think they're really lovely and the others here drink tea so I think a teapot cozy is going to be an essential in our home so I'm going to use that pattern there. I've started some other knits because my lovely mum gave me money for my birthday so that I could go onto Wool Warehouse and order wool for my next knits. One is Fair Isle. I've, I talked about it with her in excitement. My only concern is I might have picked the wrong colours. Mm. But there we go. But because there was a sale on, I had enough to buy enough yarn for another knit. So it's returning back to the Anouk cardigan and I will pop up 
some images of ones that I made before because I've made a pale cream, a stone and a black one. It's a v-neck cardigan of which I've changed from the garter stitch um, cuffs and waistline to rib and I've made it deeper and I don't do the pattern that she's put on it you know I want to make it more vintage styled and I chose this lovely hot pink Nepal by Drops and it's um, wool and alpaca. It's the one I always use for this cardigan because it's knit on um, five mil needles. Um, anywho, I started knitting that as soon as I got the wool because I think that came on the Saturday, it came on the 30th as well, so it's really quick. And I'd done, it's all knitting around this cardigan, I'd got this far, and then I realised I'd got 30 stitches too much, I'd been doing the increases wrong, you'd think as I've knit it three times before I'd know. So this is now where we're at, oh, and the wool is all wound up again, I had to pull it all out and start again. So not good. Now if we slide over to sewing plans, I really haven't been sewing much of late, I've been so busy with everything else and um, I sewed two pairs of jammies for my daughters for Christmas, um, adult jammies because they are adults, but they were all piped, um, you know, really, really proper pyjamas and they were so time consuming. I had less free time, so any free time that could be sewing time was pyjama sewing time. So, me sewing, there hasn't been I was gonna say a lot, but there hasn't been any going on. Each time I've thought I could sew, something else has happened. It's just the way that the world's planned, panned out. And this last week has been really, really horrendous and my back's gone. I'm now able to film this for you because I can actually sit comfortably and talk without being in excruciating pain. So yeah, sewing's not been up there. Now I'm hoping to get back to sewing. I was looking through my stash. This shows up actually quite orangey compared to how it is, but even though it's not that orangey, they go really well together. So I'm already thinking of a dress in this fabric. And I think I might do my um, Betty um, tie bodice with the skirt from my Patreon. That's the one that I've got earmarked for this, which has been in my stash for absolutely yonks. And I will show you the other fabrics in a mo. Now, in terms of Fair Isle, I did show you in my last video that I was drawn towards this cardigan, which is called Cloud Busting by Susan Crawford. If I come a bit closer, you might see the detail. Now, the one thing I find with Fair Isle is the colour options, and you kind of want to be in a wool shop putting all the wools, you know, how they would look. Um, on Wool Warehouse, I did the wish list, so I could kind of put them side by side. I'm not 100% with my choices, to be absolutely honest. I did um, work some samples to see how I felt they would work, but these are the colours that I picked. I kind of wanted to go for a plain base, something that would go with everything, and I thought, I love blues, greens, and pinks. Let's steer away from black for a change, you know, make it something that will work all year round. So I went for these colours in um, Drops Nord. And that is, it's a four ply, and Drops Nord is, let me have a look, 45% alpaca, 30% polyamide, and 25% wool. I don't like 100% wool, I find it just too scratchy scratchy, I don't want it near me. I mean, this blue, I absolutely love this blue. I love all the colours, apart from this one. It kind of works, it's the right palette, but it veers towards a sort of orangey pink for me, I'm just... I'm not 100% sold. I mean, when I put it by me, I think it suits me. So, so we shall see. But I'm now thinking I shouldn't have gone for cream. I should have gone for a more oatmeal base or when I was watching Father Brown yesterday, which has now started back here in the UK again, series 11, I think it is, or season 11, whatever you call them. Um, and I'm trying to think, I think she's called Brenda, the, the young kind of Bunty version. She's not posh like Bunty, but she's, you know, it's the young person version. She's been wearing some fabulous Fair Isle cardigans and she had one with a lovely pink and then I think it, the pattern was here and it was low around the waistband and it was a dark grey, which I don't normally go for, but dark grey background with red on top and then the red picked up somewhere in the pink too. And I thought I really, really like that colour combination. So, 
Um, I'm thinking with my cardigan, do I change the colours even though I've got this lovely wool or do I just plough on? Um, who knows? I've got to make a decision, haven't I? Because I've got this lovely wool, I was excited and it's a present. I knitted these samples to see how the colourway, I think that's upside down, but I knitted these samples to see how the colourways work. So that's one, that was my original choice and I wasn't sure about the pink that I said I don't like too much there so I just knitted a little bit just to see what it looks like with the paler pink there so they both look rather different um, so I'm trying to decide and there's a lot of work in there so I shall start that soon when my head allows um, there's other options with this cardigan of whether you knit it with a vintage fit or a relaxed fit and obviously I will go with the vintage fit um, and whether you knit it in the round or you knit them as flat pieces. Now knitting as flat pieces means there'll be even more yarn ends to sew in. If I knit it in the round which I love to do it means then you've got to do a thing called steaking which I know what it is but I've never done it and it seems really scary because steaking is when you've got to pick up you know with thread like you know sewing thread all up the front of the cardigan then cut through so you would obviously have knitted extra stitches for where you're cutting through to then pick up and knit on the bands so there would be less yarn ends to sew in but I'm thinking all of that work and what if I totally cock it up that is too big a risk I, I'm just not ready this is my first adventure in a whole garment fair aisle so I'm just not prepared to go there right I shall just show you my other bits of fabric that I'm thinking of um, I had got some patterns over there but I don't feel like sharing them with you right now because I feel we've been talking for quite a long time so I've got a few other blacks in here. I got this fabric, I don't even know how much there is. I've got to reacquaint myself with how much fabric is here. This is a glorious fabric I got in payment from Fabric Godmother, um, doing some ambassador um, projects for them. And I was going to do a particular thing for my Patreon on this. This was when I got it all over a year ago. And now I'm undecided, so I've, I really want to be wearing the darn stuff. It's all the colours I love. Um, one after, I mean, there's a lot of black bases here. I've got this fabric that, you know, this is me searching through the cupboard. I haven't gone through this. There's all sorts of fabrics in there. Um, this was just me picking out a few that felt right for how the weather is right now. This fabric, I was going to sell. Then I thought, no, I really like it. I'm back and forth with it. I've had it a very long time. But it's soft it feels lovely I'm, I'm just not sure about how the print lays but do you know what I could just make something and see if I'm drawn towards wearing it because the colours are lovely and it goes with my new to be cardigan doesn't it well it goes with I try and keep my colours where it works I don't know about you but whenever I'm picking knitwear I think what colours will go with the things in my wardrobe you know I'm always thinking about what gaps is it a black pair of trousers I need or a green pair or you know what type of blouses and then just put some plain whites and blacks that I need in to balance everything out with the florals and so I'm always considering how my wardrobe works when I when I make my fabric and, and wool choices now in terms of um other colours that I do really love, I do love a bit of red and obviously my red lippy. I got this at a fabric sale, vintage fabric sale in the summer and this is I think 1940s fabric and I was going to make a blouse out of this and I've still not done it and absolutely love it but I think this one's going to be great for spring with this really lovely grassy green um, colour. Is it showing up well? There it is, it's showing up better now. So that's not black, is it, like the others? But the thing I really, really need to make while I mentioned basics are jeans. I wear jeans a lot, you know, um, 1950s style jeans and 40s wide, wide leg ones, all from patterns I've drafted myself, other than I've got a pair of Gertie's uh, Marilyn jeans that I have made as well. But I've got two lots of denim. They've been there for a heck of a long time too, along with the buttons, the zips, everything. I've just not got round to making them but I wear jeans a lot as I said um, and I need to get on with them because the ones I've got 
are shrinking in the wash. They're getting really shabby. They're still wearable and I keep mending them, but I just want some that look decent as well, that don't look so fully a party. Um, you know, it lifts your mood, doesn't it? If you're wearing something that feels a bit sharper. But my weight was up and down. I've been losing quite a bit of weight. I think, um, I think after Christmas, I've lost about half a stone. So, um, you know, and that's not through conscious choice. Um, so yeah, I knew I'd got to redraft the pattern to fit me. And I think that's why, you know, where before I thought I've got to make them bigger because I got bigger in the summer. And so it's just been up and down whether I commit to these jeans, which is ridiculous because I need them. There's lots of ideas and um, projects ongoing as always. Lots trying to juggle with work and everything I need to do there. So, um, yeah, I need to work out how to timetable better and carve me out some sewing time because sewing's about me, it's my business, it's what I do, it's my passion and I need to be spending more time doing it. Onwards into 24 and I shall. I definitely find time for knitting because then I sit down of an evening and I watch or listen to something and I knit but I've got to carve out the sewing time once my back is well enough for me to lean over the table and cut patterns out and cut fabric out. They are all my plans. That's me for today. Thank you so much for joining me and listening to my chit chat of the new year with knitting and sewing mates. If you don't want to miss my videos then please subscribe and then you'll get a notification. Comment below if you have any thoughts or questions. Um, I always get back to you as soon as I can. I love to hear what your thoughts so are. Thanks so much for joining me. Until I see you next time, bye bye.